On average, it is estimated that you will meet 80,000 people within a lifetime. I am merely one of the 80,000 that will cross your path. So allow me to acquaint myself in a simple game of two truths and a lie. One, my name is Clarissa Isaiah Palacios, and I'm a senior here at San Carlo High School. Two, my favorite color is pink. And three, I am disabled. If you know me well, you will know that I'm too indecisive to ever commit to claiming to favor one color more than the other. However, the soft yellow and orange hues of sunset do please me dearly. My name is Clarissa, so by inductive reasoning, I am disabled. There are a few of you here today who are aware of my challenge, but for those of you who don't, I was born with a unilateral cataract in my left eye, which led to no vision development and degrading vision in my right eye over time. 18 years into my life, and I'm my parents' most expensive child, for medical reasons, <laughs> but I still fully don't understand how I was born blind in my left eye. According to my doctors, it was simply an oops, a continual defect, all cells were dividing. However, over the course of the past three years, I can confidently say I have begun to see why, in a metaphorical sense, obviously. Growing up, I had never considered my vision a disability, but merely a challenge. As far as I was concerned, I could run, jump, and play just like anybody else. It wasn't until a third grade, me third grade measurements test when the effects of my lack of vision on my, dis my effects of my lack of vision on my education began to reveal itself. Test after test, I would come home with failing grades. My passion for academics and confidence as a student and a leader began to develop a dent, a dent but never a crack. Surely I thought if God could heal an old and fully blind man, he could heal nine-year-old me. For years, I would spend the last 15 minutes before bed gathering the books with the largest print. Covering my right eye, I would open a book and look and read and hope that one day I would miraculously be able to see. By my sophomore year, I had abandoned my old hope with the blame that I was too busy, but mostly because the effects of my lack of my vision on, my edu on every part of my life had spread like wildfire. But most profoundly on my education, the one thing that I knew I could control and was good at no matter what, or so I thought. I am now provided with enlarged textbooks, papers, and text-to-speech assistance, and other accommodations to prove with the shaking deformation of letters and numbers caused by my vision fatigue. But even then, the blindness in my left eye, never, I'd still never considered it a disability, but merely an impairment, still simply a dent, a dent that didn't crack until last year, while I was isolated behind the Zoom screen, when I began to depend on my fifth grade brother to read to me my junior year homework. Crazy, right? It was supposed to be the other way around, I would tell myself. Breakdown after breakdown, I, the dent in my curiosity and my passion for academics grew and grew until I succumbed to my limitations, the humiliation, the disappointment, to be, to, the humiliation and disappointment um, that came from failing in academics. The one thing I was supposed to be good at and always had control over was insurmountable. As my grades declined, my overall health and well-being soon followed and I couldn't recognize myself, all because of a silly little pre-existing flaw. Now, if I had not told you that, being, that the color pink being my favorite color was a lie, would you have known I had a disability? Odds are, probably not. After all, I can fully, by first impression, I can fully articulate myself and have full mobility of my limbs. According to, the international, according to an international survey conducted by the World Health Organization, one in, seven million, one in seven people are living with a disability. That totals to about one billion people in the world. In a room of about 100, it is likely that 13 of you would share a part of my story. The other hypothetical view, the other hypothetical 87 of you may not have a disability, but I can 100% guarantee that everybody here has faced some limitation or challenge. Whether your limitation may be financial, social, emotional, or simply a barrier that allows us as a community to connect with, that, with one another without even knowing the premise of each other's story. With this in mind, I invite you to ponder one of my favorite words, Sonder. Sonder, as a known, is a realization that each random passerby in your life is living a vivid and complex life on their own, populated with their own ambitions, crazy friends, routines, 
worries and inherited craziness. Look to the person to your right. Look to the person to your left. Do you know their favorite color? If they got here on time? I was running late. If you're running late, that's okay too. <laughs> but oftentimes, we are preoccupied with the course of our own lives and our own endeavors that we fail to acknowledge that the person beside us, whether they could be at their peaks or their pitfalls, as we're at our highs and lows as well. For the first time, I truly felt stuck, isolated. I didn't know what to do. And that became the biggest pill for me to swallow, accepting my disability. But as soon as I did that, I began to see growth. According to the World Health Organization, an impairment can be defined as any loss or abnormality in the physiological, psychological, or anatomical structure or function, whereas a disability is a restriction in the manner, or in the restriction or lack of ability and to perform activity in a manner within that is considered abnormal in a range of human abnormal or a range considered normal for a human being. Though initially I refused to accept my lack of sight as a restriction, I began to accept that the, that I needed help in day to day actions. Though immensely humbling, I do need help reading a menu. I do need help pouring a glass of water. I do need help reading the numbers on my debit card, which truly proved helpful when I really need to consider if I should make a purchase or not, because I have to second think myself. Yeah, you should be a half blind too, huh? <laughs> but I began to. I am disabled, and I accepted it, and that's okay, because maybe, just maybe, I am disabled by design. Let's consider the Fibonacci sequence. The Fibonacci sequence is a set of numbers that starts with one or a zero followed by a 1, and proceeds based on the rule that each number is equal to the sum of the preceding two numbers. Now don't freak out, I'm not trying to give you a math lesson, okay? <laughs> but when applied to beyond mathematics, the same phenomena of sequences of, creates a Fibonacci spiral, and even greater the basis of nature. Nature is designed with this golden ratio to construct things as great as our galaxies and as small and defined as shells and tree trunks, and even humankind. For example, if the length of a hand has a value of 1, then combined with the length of a hand and a forearm has a value of 1.618. These dimensions allow for the flawless and execution of human structure and mobility. Even more incredible is the DNA molecule. The program for all of life is based on the same golden spiral and structure as our galaxies. Whether you believe in an omnipotent creator or not, how crazy is it that the same structure for everything in the nature is found in you too. I, Clarissa Palacios, disabled and all, and fearfully, wonderfully made, and so are you. So based on the statistics I've previously presented to you, I know I'm not the only one in this room with a disability, let alone a challenge. We cannot, we can connect on the basis that sharing this identity of an overcomer, but what if we all began to think this way? What if we began to recognize that at our pitfalls, a person to our right is experiencing the joy of their triumphs and vice versa? The world does not revolve around us as individuals. The world does not rotate around me and my disability at its center point. So why did I live my life with my disability at its access? What if we began to set apart ourselves from our limitations and became intentional to write it within our story rather than make it our story? This concept of Sonder has led me to discover passion through my dis a direction through my disability where my identity it does not depend on my limitations, but on the products of my perseverance. To conclude, there are four valuable lessons I've learned with, my, with disability and hope to share with you all. One, we are more than just a statistic. The, ratio, the one to seven ratio that I represent is more than just a number but a story of an overcomer. One of the 80,000 that you are likely to intersect at some point in your life. It took me 18 years to feel confident in my ability to advocate for myself and others, but ultimately refine what my disability had defined in me. Two, adversity is an opportunity. Now, adversity by definition is misfortune. However, I would argue the exact opposite. Adversity is the ultimate pinnacle of character. Without it, we would not be molded into the people we are becoming and who we are today. The advantages that come from recognizing vulnerability but choosing to claim perseverance over adversity is a true fortune that many reject before even trying. This virtue truly elevates our greatest of leaders and shapes the innovative minds of our collective future. Three, life is a gift, so make it good. 
Though I still fear the day where one day I may not even have vision of my seeing right eye. My mindset has made a powerful shift where I can find peace in the following. You and I were made on purpose, with a purpose, for a unique purpose, purposely, perfectly designed for us. So embrace it. And four, the reward of resiliency. The joy that comes from reaping the rewards of your dedicated ambition is indescribable. As I enter college in the fall, I have plans driven by a passionate purpose, with the joy that I now possess giving all of my trials and tribulation meaning. I hope that one day you all will experience this too. I hope, or now that although, or although I am one of the 80,000 stories that you'll meet in your lifetime, I hope that this brief glimpse into mind has helped shape the next chapter of your own stories, where the products or the byproducts of your limitations do not compare to the products of your pers or perseverance. Thank you.